Okay, thank you, Kyle. I hope everyone everyone can hear me uh, clearly. Uh, my name is Amr Shaker. I am uh, an inspirational coach and executive uh, consultant. And I'm very happy to, uh, to be sharing with you a topic which has a, a title, a little bit provocative title. And I will start sharing my screen now. I hope it will be visible to everyone. Crisis, which crisis? And um, I mean, the main message that I want to give, and I would uh, go through it uh, throughout the, the slides, will be anything that we perceive is based on our, in our mindset and how we perceive things. If we perceive things negatively, it will be a crisis. And what we are going through today will be a major uh, negative uh, event that will impact us professionally and profes personally. If it is not, if we perceive it as an opportunity, if we perceive it as a new start or as a continuation of something that we, we, uh, we, uh, we started recently or long time ago, it will be it. So it all depends on our perception and our mindset. So I just wanted to introduce the set of, it is a mind game. It is all in your mind. Of course, we are going to talk about many other elements that the mind will, will influence, like the emotions, like the relations, which is already related to the emotions, but it is all in how you perceive things and all in our mind. <clears throat> so moving on, I mean, just a short introduction uh, to myself. I'm originally Egyptian. I moved to France 30 years ago. And I went through many transformations, many self-transformations. Before helping others, before helping organizations, I had to transform myself. So many of the things that I'm going to share with you, I went through it myself. I went through it uh, with success and in some cases with failures. But I learned from both uh, cases. So I am just my own lab, my own field of testing things on myself, on my family, before trying to uh, suggest and share it with others. <clears throat> success criteria for any entrepreneur, and most of you are uh, leading your own small or medium or even big organizations, the success criteria mainly relies on three elements. And as I mentioned, I'm Egyptian, so I have this pyramid because I always think in a triangle manner. You, have, you need a, a clear vision, a vision for your company, vision for yourself as an entrepreneur, and then a strategy to achieve this vision, and then powerful ideas to make sure that the strategy is, exec is executable and achievable. But what uh, Alice mentioned in her introduction and what many of us realize every day that any company, any uh, small startup or big old company, it, it deals with people. We deal with customers. We serve customers. We have shareholders who are humans. We have uh, employees, team members, partners. They're all humans. They're all people. And when it comes to uh, dealing with people, it's all about emotions. But only, not only dealing with others is about emotions. Dealing with ourselves is all about emotions. Managing ourselves is all about emotions. So the emotional element is very important. And the leader, and I'm here, I'm addressing to all of you, whether you are a leader of a company or leader for any kind of activity, even leader in, in your own life, you are, because you are the leader of your own life, you have to be the guide of this emotion. You have to guide others towards what you want them to adhere to. And most uh, probably it will be positive emotions. And this is what will create positive resonance within the environment that you deal with. So it is all about emotions. And the main, the main question is how to use the emotions and how to uh, for, direct the emotions in order to achieve your objectives. Whether it is in a crisis environment or not in a crisis environment, and independently, how to make sure that it is all about positive direction and positive actions. The personal vision, and again, uh, it, is, it was mentioned earlier, it's all about it is the deepest expression of what we want in life. And again, this is, goes beyond your company. This goes beyond what you are trying to do professionally. It goes about your presence in life and what you want to achieve from this presence. Some of us have a complete separation between our professional life and our personal life. <clears throat> we want to, our priority is to raise our family and to raise our kids and, and have fun and have sports and all this and work whether it is on a private basis or uh, as an employee, it is just to make sure that you have an income, to make sure that you achieve your uh, uh, purpose in life, which is more focused on the family. Others, it is the opposite. <laughs> it is the company that you created or the company that you work with for, and you want to achieve the objectives, professionally speaking. And of course, the work-life balance is about finding 
the right uh, equilibrium between the two. But once you have a clear vision and you know why you are doing what you are doing, you are going to be triggering uh, encounters with the right people, the new ideas, new information, and you are going to shape your environment. And this is, again, the, 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 the mind aspect of what I wanted to introduce, is once you have clarity, once you are focused, when you are consistent in what you want to achieve, you will be able to reach your objectives. The leader task, and, and, and as a leader, as an entrepreneur, you have many, many tasks because you are dealing with many stakeholders. You are dealing with your investors, the venture capitalists, your partners, your employees, your customers, and you have to motivate some, you have to inspire others, you have to persuade others, you have to solve conflicts, and, 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 and. So as a leader, you need to have many skills and you, have, you need to have a toolbox to deal with all of this. But how can you deal with all of those stakeholders if you don't understand them? As Alice mentioned, how to, this empathy aspect how to put yourself in their shoes. And in their shoes, not only to say, what do they want from me? Because this sometimes it is straightforward ex uh, exercise. A uh, venture capitalist or uh, an investor wants the return on investment. A customer would like to get the service and, or the product that he's paying for. But it is, goes beyond the, this point, beyond what he or she is expecting from you. Is what are their needs? What are their challenges? What are their obstacles, problems? And how can, through your company, through your product, through your service, you can help them achieving beyond the purpose of the product that you are selling to them? How, how you can help them growing, how you can help them going through this, whatever, if you call it crisis or this difficult time, or again, through any transformation that they go through. So to deal with those stakeholders, you need to understand them and you need to have this kind of extra empathy because you need to put yourself in their place and once you are in that place, even if when you are negotiating a difficult contract with them or a difficult uh, conflictual situation, the first thing that I always advise is to put yourself in their shoes, to think as they, uh, how they think, what, the, what, they, what they want to achieve. And once you understand this point, you will be able to give them and get uh, uh, what they need. And you need to find the right balance between your objectives and their objectives. This is as far as if you are, if you are dealing with, with someone with whom you have to negotiate something. But as far as the customers, as far as your employees, and again, it was mentioned earlier that your employees today are going through some doubts. Are they going to, re to maintain their jobs? Are they going to be able to, uh, to, uh, to uh, get um, their salary, their basic things? If they would like to get growth through your company, should they remain with you or should they go somewhere else? All of those questions you need to, put, to ask yourself on their behalf and be able to, to, to get clear answers. And one of the main tips that I always say to, or I will always share with the entrepreneurs and the leaders is that you need always to, to make sure that the others know how, how you think and what you think about. Don't keep it for yourself. Again, it is, it is, if you have anxiety, if you have fears, I'm not suggesting that you share all your fears and anxiety all the day, otherwise you are going to create uh, co uh, conflictual uh, emotions. But your objectives, your direction, your uh, priorities, you need to be always clear about it in order for them to have trust in you and have credibility because they will say, they will feel that you, not only that you understand them, but you are able to address what they are looking for. And again, independently, if they are to your team members or stakeholders or customers or what. So this is what I wanted to say about the leader task and the, the, the sometimes the challenge that the leader is going through. But again, before, before you do this and before you help others, you need to help yourself. And uh, we always uh, remember that in, uh, in uh, flights, um, the crew will always remind us that before you put the oxygen on a, uh, your child or someone uh, youngster, you have to put it on yourself first. So this applies also in life. Before you help others, you need to help yourself. You need to be in a good shape. You need to understand your emotions. You need to drive your emotions. You need to know where you are going and where you are coming from. And this is something that, that as an entrepreneur, I come back to the, to the purpose of the company, if we look at it. Any company, uh, it, it is very clear what they do. And it is very clear how they do it. But sometimes what is not clear, why they do it. If you ask any or many of the entrepreneurs why you are creating this company, ah, I would like to sell the best computers. I would like to sell the best... Um, 
cars or whatever, whether it is technical company, technology driven company or service company or whatever. But the next question is why you want to sell this, com uh, this kind of service? What kind of uh, uh, challenge you want to address and help people address it? And once you know the why, it will be related to your purpose. And again, it will be related to your drivers, your motivations, your emotions. And this is where you are going to be able to be clear about your direction. And no matter, and this is the key message that I wanted to share with you at this moment, no matter which difficult situation, whether we call it crisis or not crisis, no matter what is happening in your professional life or in your personal life, as long as you are clear about your why, and as long as you understand how you drive your own self, your own emotions, your own uh, um, priorities, and how you see the surrounding and how you see the life and how you perceive things, you will be able to achieve it because you are going to be consistent and people will trust you. People will have, will see that you are credible. They will follow you. You will attract them. You will be a force of attraction. And again, this is the main uh, aspect. By managing yourself and by having clarity with yourself, you are going to have clarity with others. If you are not consistent, if you are changing your priorities from one day to another, if you are hesitant, you are not going to be able to achieve your objective. And again, this is the oxygen mask that you have to put on yourself. And this is why it's always very important for entrepreneurs, for leaders to feel good about what they are doing, to feel motivated about what they are doing. Because if once you feel this, you will be able to help others feel the same and you will share this enthusiasm and you will be an inspirational leader. And this is the key, uh, uh, one of the key skills for a leader, not only as a good storyteller, and we always emphasize on the ability to tell your story and em emphasize on why you created your company and your product, but you are also uh, uh, communicating your enthusiasm your motivation, your joy. And this, I can tell you with practice that this has a very good impact on many, uh, in many cases. Opportunities perception. Everywhere there are opportunities. In every single con condition and every single context, there are opportunities. You just have to, again, filter what is going on. First of all, you have to read the situation and you have to be grounded with the reality. You cannot be distorted from reality. So I'm not, I'm, when I say crisis, which crisis, I'm not suggesting at all that uh, you ignore that what is happening with the COVID or what's happening with the economical situation. You have to understand the reality. But then you have to put the filter, the positive filter of seeing how you can use this context as an opportunity, how you can use it to identify new needs, new demands. In, in any kind of economical tight situation, customers will always look for credible uh, uh, partner, uh, uh, reliable solutions, reliable products. They will be selective. They will not buy anything. Their money will be limited. Hence, they will buy the right thing at the right time. So once you have a right product and you have the right timing on when you position it and how you to position it, you will have opportunities that others will not have. If you have the right morale and, as I said, the enthusiasm that you are going to ha that you have and you uh, um, provoke and induce to others you will be able to survive while your competitors will start breaking down. So there are many opportunities because the space will be wider because the others will leave the, the battlefield, if we call it like this, in terms of competition. There are many, many, many uh, uh, opportunities like this. I can, I can share with you an example. I was once uh, sent to, uh, to solve a big crisis uh, between uh, uh, a telecom provider and uh, an airline company. And uh, it was the airline company wanted to completely uh, stop the contract with the provider. So um, when I went to, uh, to, the, to the country where the, this airline company was, was based, and just to be very specific, it was Pakistan Airways, <clears throat> I found that the problem, of course, we solved the technical problem, and it took just a few hours to solve it. But the main problem was the fact that the, 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 the staff on both sides didn't, were not able to communicate on how to solve the problem. So despite that it was really a major crisis at the CEO level, there was an opportunity, an opportunity to sell not only a training program, but to sell a collaboration program, to sell a, a partnership program, to help Pakistan Airways to improve their services, improve their IT environment, improve the way that they serve their own customers. Because through this crisis, we identified all the improvement areas, whether we call it improvement areas or call it challenges or we call it weaknesses. But at the end of the day, those are areas that they needed help for. So instead of going to survive and avoid them 
completely this, uh, stopping the contract, we are able to achieve growth with this, with this customer. We achieve trust with this customer and develop new business and for many years to go. So this is an example of a big, big, uh, 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 I would say, situation, big company, big crisis and big impact. I will give you another example on a small situation, very small situation. One day I had a friend, a German uh, friend, and very structured, very um, focused on what he wants. And he was going to my home country, Egypt, and he asked me for advices. And I said, usually when you go to the market, you would negotiate. The prices that they will give you at the beginning, you will, you will try to negotiate to get a better price. So the guy went and he came back and he enjoyed himself, but he came back with, with, um, with one story that he wanted to share with me. He was very uh, tough on a guy who was cleaning the shoes, you know, polishing the shoes. He decided to apply my advice with this guy, the guy who will, will win peanuts for uh, polishing the shoes. In fact, my, my advice was when he goes to buy big things or in the souvenir market or whatever, but he decided that he would like to apply his negotiation skills with this pol uh, shoe polisher in the street. So he negotiated for, for quite a few minutes, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And he, he, he put pressure on the guy. And uh, he felt that he was in a strong position because he was the customer. But he missed one point because the guy, okay, he said, uh, the guy asked for uh, 10, uh, 10 pounds. He said, no way, five pounds is enough. And they managed, they, they moved on and on, and he insisted on the five pounds. So the guy, the polisher said, okay, fine, for five pounds. And he polished the first leg, the first uh, feet, left side. And he said, that's it. And he said, what about the, uh, the right side? They said, this is another five. So at the end, the, 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 the opportunity that the shoe polisher found is that the, he was not very specific. And he managed to use this kind of lack of specificity to get what he wanted at the end of the day. So again, this is not a crisis environment. This is a negotiation environment. But again, the, the very simple shoe polisher identified something in the, in the context to get what he wants. So always keep your mind open. Always think about what is going on. Think about what both sides need. And both sides got what they want at the end. Uh, the 10 pounds and euros was peanuts. But he just wanted to test his, uh, his negotiation skills and he learned a big lesson about it. So again, it is, it is one of those uh, situations where you need to be always uh, attentive to what is going on. But again, positively attentive because there are many opportunities around us, whether it is now or later or in the past. There are many opportunities at, at any level, professional level, personal level, everywhere. Your plan, again, to be very pragmatic as an entrepreneur, you need always to have a plan. So at this stage, I advise my, uh, my customers for just basic three, three steps. First step is identify your qualities, your strength. Whether you write it, whether you, you, you record it in somewhere, but you need to be always related and connected to your strengths and your qualities. Never lose sight from, uh, the, uh, of, of your qualities and strengths. And not only yours, your team qualities. Everyone surrounding you, everyone is helping you. You need to identify their qualities because the value of your team, the value of your company is the accumulated value of all the team members. Second one is identify what you, the, 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 your most fears, what you really fear the most for the coming 15 months for your company. And this can be uh, losing market share, uh, your stakeholders or shareholders will, will not uh, reinvest money, uh, your investors would like to get return on investment at an earlier stage, whatever. Your customers are not happy with your uh, service or their customers do not have money to buy your service, whatever. You need to put your fears into uh, uh, in writing or at least in a visible way to you. The first step, map, take your fears and map it with your strength. So any of your fears that your qualities and strength will be able to do to deal with it, put a link and make sure that you have a plan to how, on how to address it. Remains two categories. The remain the category where your fears will not be addressed because no matter what you do, they do not depend on you. And in this case, there is no need to worry about it because no matter what you are going to, to try to do anything about it, it will not be influential by your actions. So you need to accept. And I will come back to the acceptance in a minute. Then you, you will go to the, to, the, to the fields that where you don't have already strength for it, but you still can influence. And this is where you need a plan on how to address it. And this is where you need to know how to seek the help, whether from inside your environment 
or from outside your environment. And again, this is related to the emotional intelligence because you need to understand exactly why you don't have this quality inside your team or inside yourself and where to find it. You need to read the situation clearly to be able to put the right extra tools, extra resources that you don't have into the plan to address those fears, those, those uh, challenges. As far as the acceptance, this, this element in the, in the Occidental world, sometimes we have a difficulty with. How can I accept that I will not win and, uh, what I wanted to win, How, that I will not achieve what I wanted to achieve, that I am not going to, uh, to make my, my three years plan in, on time? How, uh, how can I accept to lose market share at a certain time for later to win another market share? How can I accept to change my, my product line in order to, to adapt to the, to the environment? Again, I, I hate using the word crisis, but to the, adapt to the environment because there is a new need that I identified that is not exactly what I, used, I, I, I plan to sell or I plan my company to serve. This kind of acceptance is related to what the, Chine, the, the Asians, mainly the Chinese, but or mainly Asians and many, many people around the world call the yin and yang, this duality. You need to know how to accept defeat to be able to, to, to be ready for success. You need to accept challenges and difficulties and sometimes, uh, 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 you know, the loss of something in order to be able to be ready for getting the gains and the wins and the others. As the yin and yang is about the, the night and the day, the, the, the good weather and the bad weather, and this duality, you need to accept it. You need to accept what you have and what you don't have. You need to accept your, your weaknesses. Once you have this acceptance, you will be able to confront it and you will have the courage to confront it. And again, in a difficult context, courage is very important. You need to be courageous not only to face the problems, not only to be able to uh, uh, help your, your team members to, 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 to have strength and find the strength inside of themselves, but also to help other stakeholders outside your company in order to adhere to your value and to adhere your, to your purpose and your vision. This courage is very important. And uh, I'm sure you all know about this uh, the story about the two frogs. The, the, the one who's, uh, I mean, we put two frogs, one in a, in a boiling water and one in a cold water that we warm it step by step. And the one who survived, the frog who survived, the one that we throw in the boiling water because the frog will immediately jump because it has the legs to jump. The other one, while the water is, is at the beginning cold and we warm it step by step, will we'll try to adapt. We'll continue trying to adapt, to adapt, to adapt, putting its side from the left side to the right side, trying to adapt until there is the point of no return. This is very important as well. In your plan, you need to know to avoid the, the point of no return. And you need to have this awareness of reading the situation, reading what is going on practically, pragmatically, technically, if you are in a technical environment, but emotionally. If you, if you have uh, members of your team, if you have stakeholders who are not follow what you are doing, you need to anticipate. You need to put them in the right context. You need to avoid them going into burnout and you need to leverage any positive news in order that for everyone to be adhering to the next step and the next step and the next step. This is what your, your real role as an entrepreneur, as a leader. As I mentioned, you are an emotional guide and this is what will make a difference for you and for others. And my last slide here about the key, key takeaways. Again, this is the four main principles about emotional intelligence. This, if you apply those four principles in your daily life, whether personal life or professional life, you know it all about emotional intelligence, but the main difficulty and the main challenge is how to apply it, how to be consistent in applying. Self-awareness, we mentioned, you need to understand yourself very well. Self-management, you need to manage yourself very well, but you will not manage yourself with, with a recipe, with a recipe that will work for everyone. The recipe that will work with your brother or your neighbor or your partner will not be the recipe that will work for you because you are different. So you need to respect your uniqueness and you need to manage yourself according to your uniqueness. The social awareness, you mentioned that it is very important to read the others and be able to understand the others. And I'm going to mention uh, uh, something about the social awareness and relationship management, which is how to build the bond with others. <clears throat> because once you understand yourself very well and you manage yourself very well and you understand others, you will be able to manage the bond with others and manage the relationship in the right way. And I'm going to mention that I had the, the, the chance to, to, uh, to have a two weeks on, um, on a military ship 
called Jeanne d'Arc in France, which was part of my executive MBA a number of years ago, where a number of us as uh, students, where we are all professionals in our normal life, we are there to, uh, to, um, to be treated as um, young student, uh, officer students in the morning, and in the evening we are giving speeches and, and conferences to, uh, to share our, uh, our knowledge with them. And uh, one of the very interesting characters whom I met on this uh, military ship was the priest. Because those ships where they are in the sea for many months, they need someone to, uh, to, um, for the spiritual part. And this guy was a civil. Of course, he's not a military. He has a contract with the army for six months, and it is renewed every six months. And when I spoke with him, first, I didn't find that he has a sign on his shoulder uh, because he didn't, he didn't have a military ranking. And when I mentioned why they didn't give you something, at least to identify you, because everyone has a rank in this ship. He said, because if I have a rank, it will disconnect me from the, the level above me and the level under me. And I need to be able to communicate with everyone. I am here for everyone. So this was the practical and pragmatic explanation why he did not have a rank. But then he went to beyond the, my question. And he said, you know, Amr, this is very important that when I deal with the big commander of the ship, I am at the same level of him. And I understand him and I understand his worries and his isolation as a commander of a big ship like this one. And when I deal with the very small, lowest rank uh, uh, boy who is there to, 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 to help in the, in the machine, uh, in the room, <laughs> to fix very basic things where he, where he barely sees the sun, I, uh, I should be putting myself at his level and understand his needs and be able to, confront, to comfort him. So this is, he, he does it from a spiritual point of view. But what I liked, uh, the concept of putting himself at the level of every one of his interlocutors. And between the big commander and the, big, and the, young, uh, the lowest rank boy, he has all the level of ranking, military ranking on, on the ship. And I can tell you that on the ship, we had around 1,500 people. Of course, he doesn't deal with the 1,500 people every day, but he is able to communicate at different levels and he's able to adapt to the different levels because his role is to support them spiritually and morally, and in some cases, sometimes as a coach. So this kind of uh, adaptability, it's all about emotions. And again, it is your gut feeling, what, what your inner voice will guide you to do and not to do, but it's also related to the mind because the mind will be able to use those emotions and perceive reality in a positive way. Otherwise, the mind will take control in a negative manner and will perceive it in a negative way. And this is, of course, the last thing we want in a, in a, in a context where maybe the surrounding will induce uh, us to think negatively. But again, remember, when you think positively and when you are able to induce positiveness around you and this positive resonance, you will be able to differentiate yourself as a company, as individuals, as, as, as a group from competition and your partners and your customers will trust you and you will be, they will be attracted to, the, to do business with you. And this is the key message. This is how you will be able not only to survive, but to grow through this difficult time. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. And uh, I believe, Kyle, the time for questions now, if you wish. So I'll let you. <clears throat> so uh, the first uh, question, uh, did you write something, a book, articles about the subject? Uh, not yet, but um, uh, my uh, website is under construction and uh, very soon uh, you will be able to, uh, I mean, I did put in the slides and once you have the recording, you will have uh, the website connections uh, and you will be able to see my articles on this topic and I'm more than happy to interact with you offline on any of those subjects. So another question, what tools, tricks uh, do you personally uh, uh, use to manage yourself? Um, in the past, I can tell you a um, uh, uh, nice question because when I was at school, one day I, I, um, I did a table and I put all the names of my colleagues at, uh, in the class and I put their strengths and weaknesses and I put how I can build relationship with them. And I was 10 years old and I, I did not have any kind of training or, or methodology to do this, but it started by, by this kind of intuitive action. And along the time, I, I, used, I, I, I was coached by many. Uh, experienced people. I coach many people as well. And step by step, I build my own tools. I build my own reflection points, whether it is on a piece of paper or on a computer or this. But again, emotions is, is how it is written. It is about your inner feelings, how you feel, feel things. And if you feel things 
in a certain way that you need to log it in a computer or you need to log it on a piece of paper, do it. If you just record it in your mind and then you relate to, uh, you, you reflect on it, whether through meditation or while, while you are walking, while you are doing sport, it is your tool, your. Uh, so I don't have a recipe on specific tools, but I can tell you that I am, I am very um, observant. I, I always look at what is going on around me. I, I take notice of the signs. There are always signs around us. And this is something else that I wish to, uh, to mention and share it with you. Uh, if you are thinking about something, there will be a program in TV that will give you a hint about it. There will be something, an article on the internet. Someone at work will be talking about it. And uh, I have a recently a customer that uh, mainly, I mean, the ones who know the film, The Intern, of Robert De Niro, and uh, it was shown in the French TV last Sunday. Uh, it was, it is, I saw it a few years back, and the first time I, I saw this movie, it was just a few days before supporting a customer who had the same context as the young lady in the film. So again, it is, it is, you have to be always ready to get the signs, interpret the signs, and link the signs, link what is happening around you to your story, to your journey. <clears throat> So um, what are some of the signs you have seen lately that give you hope? So many people are looking for it now. It can be good to hear from others who are seeing positive signs too. Again, as I mentioned, I mean, the title of my, uh, my presentation here, Crisis, which crisis? I see hope everywhere. Hope is in, uh, in um, not only that we are going to find a cure for this, uh, for this uh, disease or this virus, but the hope that there are people who are using this kind of situation to get united. There are people who did not speak with each other since a long time. So we might say it is nice, it's emotional, uh, social connections, and, and it's good. Uh, but it's not that. I saw people uh, building partnerships when they got united with, with, with others with whom they did not have connections for many years. It was my case personally. I got reconnected with, uh, with an ex-colleague who became, uh, we decided recently to, to build a partnership. So, and, and, and we put our strength together and, and we are opening new, uh, new opportunities for us. Hopes in new technologies, because uh, in the people who are in the technological side, the, what is happening now with the social distancing and, and what's happening there is, is creating new needs for uh, uh, internet of things, for artificial intelligence, for others. So there are new innovations. And I work very closely with many R&D uh, people in different fields, and I see many innovations happening. Uh, I see that we are now doing lots of things on internet. So a few years back, we are trying, we are started to do um, mobile banking and enabling the Africans and people who are, do not have in poor countries who did not have access to banks, accounts, and others. Now it is even expanding more because even the normal people with the normal banks, they cannot go to banks. So uh, mobile banking and remote banking is, is, is expanding. So there are new facilities for the ones who did not have those facilities. So there are lots of hopes. I, I see hopes in my own personal environment around you. I, I, can, I can share it with you offline. So again, it's, it's, um, it's a context that is generating lots of ideas. People are not letting themselves down because they know that they have to do something about it. And sometimes those situations create new ideas much more than in normal or wealthy situations because people have to move, have to push themselves in the back and say, we cannot be passive. And by not being passive, there, are, there, are, there, are creativity, there is creativity and positive energy happening around us. It's, a, it's an interesting thing too, right? One of the things I've personally noticed lately was this uh, sense where everyone, there were many people doing things and talking about problems or talking and coming up with these ways of doing things. And yet at the end, the it was always, why isn't anyone doing this? And it's actually, well, we kind of are. If you look around, you, I see a lot of that. Uh, people doing and, and, and acting and, and really uh, taking part in it. I think that your, your question of saying, or your, your response of saying, we can look at this differently uh, is really one that does resonate or can resonate with people because again, when I look around personally, I don't see uh, people just sort of being passive and not trying. Uh, and I think that that is where, for me personally, there's a lot of hope in that. Uh, exactly, Kai. Thank you. For uh, but so, yeah, no, thank you very much for the for the talk. Uh, for everybody who's, I would just in, emphasize, Kai. Yeah. 
uh, I'm sharing my last uh, slide here. How can I help you? So um, I'm very um, ready and open to help you improving your business by putting emotional intelligence into practice and transforming and, and performing transformation executive consultancy, uh, independently from which field you are, what is the size of your company and the challenges you are facing. I'm very ready to help you there. Here you can see uh, my website. And again, it is under construction. So it, we have some information on it, but in a, in a couple of weeks, it, uh, it will include much more information. And you have my email address, uh, follow up at amdacoaching.com and I will be uh, extremely happy to hear from you and to follow up with you further after this uh, event. And that actually brings <laughs> us also nicely to the main stage where Alice is going to wrap up in a few minutes, but there's also, you'll notice on the left-hand side of your screen, uh, the uh, area as well where everybody can go and gather and talk and continue the conversation uh, beyond what we've already had. So. All right. Thank you very much for uh, for your time, and uh, and I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Kai. Thanks, Kai.